everybody, welcome back to my Keep Calm and Mom On Hour, where we are celebrating the tears, the laughter, and all the insane feelings of motherhood in the middle of a pandemic. Um, I have my audience of mamas with me, and as you can see, the multitasking world of motherhood never ends. We have a lot of, of babies here, a lot of little ones. They're all hanging out. Um, it's a year into the pandemic. We're seeing the toll it's taken on all of us, especially moms. Uh, this year, the New York Times launched a groundbreaking series of articles called The Primal Scream, which profiles just how tough it's been for all of us. We have the creator of that series on the line. She is, of course, a mama herself. Please welcome Jessica Gross, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, absolutely. And by the way, super rad glasses. Let's just lead with that. Thank you. You are welcome. Um, well, it's nice to see you. And this series, it was very important for you, right? It's probably the most meaningful thing that I've ever worked on um, because I was living through it myself and I was just hearing from so many readers um, and so many moms across the country how really hard this had been on them, mm. but also how they felt that no one was really listening. So I would write an article every two or three months about the struggles that moms were going through and other moms would feel really strongly about it, but they didn't feel like there was anything happening in society that was helping them. And so having this really big package that was impossible to ignore, I think really uh, brought the issue outside just moms who were experiencing it. Absolutely. What, what would be your definition of the primal scream? So it's just that feeling that you are so overwhelmed that all you want to do is scream into a pillow or maybe like run into the mountains and scream where no one can hear you. Um, <laughs> and I got the idea for the entire package this summer because I was listening to a conference call on mute while taking the laundry from the washer to the dryer. And then I heard my kids start whining because they were hungry. So I left the laundry and I started making them lunch and I was still listening to the conference call. And I was just like, I'm gonna explode. Like, this is not sustainable. Yeah. Um, and I felt like a lot of women could probably relate to what I was going through. It is so real, the primal scream, because you're like, I'm drowning. Like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to get back up there. There's no one cares. No one's throwing a life preserver. <laughs> and it's so horrible. Have you all ever felt that? Anyone in the audience? I mean, like yes. just, you know, today maybe. <laughs> um, but well, tell us, tell us what you learned about how deeply the pandemic is affecting moms. So we interviewed so many experts, a lot of economists, a lot of psychologists. And what's really interesting about this moment is it's both an economic and a mental health crisis. You know, we really wanted to get out there sort of the emotions of what moms are really going through. And so we interviewed moms across the country and two of the moms that we spent a lot of time with are here. They're so amazing. Um, they did diaries for us where they really shared what was going on day to day in their lives. Which is kind of a big deal because no one wants to one point out that they're drowning. No one wants to be like, yeah, over here. Um, but at the same time, it's a, it's a, it's you're kind of just like, there's no other option. I think that's the point you get to where you're like, God, everything is like with your kids. On top of that, the mental health of your kids that you're also stressing about, like for them as, yeah. a, as a parent. Um, but you did something really cool. You set up a hotline for moms to vent, right? We did. Uh, we were inspired by a group of moms in New Jersey who on the first day of the school year last year, they just all got together in a field and screamed their little hearts out. And so we set up a phone line. We set up a phone line right around the holidays, and you know that's a stressful time already, not even when you're in a pandemic, and hundreds of moms called in, and they were crying, they were yelling, they were cursing, and some of them are really hilarious, and some of them are totally heartbreaking, but they're all really special. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm so excited, like, that. I think this would be the best thing ever to hear, like, these voicemails, right? Like, even if yourself, like, a, like an audio, like a, I don't know, a diary of your, your life like that. So we have some of those voicemails. Um, here, check them out. Welcome to the New York Times Primal Scream Line, where the floor is yours to yell, laugh, cry, or vent for a solid minute. I just wanted to say, I am doing my sixth load of laundry today. I'm gonna lose my mind. Oh, 
God every day. I think I can't do this again, but then I do. I get it, I get up, and I do it, because that's just what parents do, right? Oh my gosh, I, honestly, my favorite one, it was the heartbreaking one, and that's just what parents do, but I love at the end she goes, right? <laughs> or what do y'all do? <laughs> it's like, is there something else? Um, it, that's amazing, and all of us have felt all of those emotions 100%. Um, I want to bring one of the ladies who shared their mom fail moments back into the conversation. Uh, can you tell us about your primal scream moment, Melissa? Yeah, thanks. Um, so I lost my job and I ended up having to get a job at my kid's daycare and they woke up one morning with the sniffles and they weren't able to go to care. So I had to stay home with them. I wasn't getting paid. Um, and on top of all of that, around that time, we had been displaced from our home because we had a major plumbing issue happen at our house where sewage was literally collecting under our floorboards. So we had to move in with my in-laws. And then one morning, um, work called and they were like, hey, we need you to bring these materials. And I had on my um, silky pajamas. And it was like, I put them on the night before being like, hey, this is my little like mom pick me up. They're my favorite silky pajamas. And so I woke up that morning and I'm like, right, I gotta get the kids in the car. And there was just so much change and transition. My son had an absolute meltdown. And it took me an hour to get both my son and my daughter in the car. And even when I got them in the car, I'm still in my pajamas because I, I don't even have time to get dressed. And I get them in the car, he's having a meltdown. And then I just had my, my meltdown and my primal scream moment. And yeah, I just felt so absolutely overwhelmed with how I felt like my whole world was really just turned upside down. Oh, I, oh, girl, I have felt that moment and you just, I've often screamed at the sky, are you freaking kidding me? Like, are you like, like it's like, <laughs> it's, and, and by the way, during the pandemic, our bathroom broke too and we had to literally go to the bathroom outside like cave people, <laughs> like, like, I was like, I mean, luckily, like, I'm not fancy. So I was like, all right, like, but like it happens and to the best of us and it's, it's so hard. And you know what, you're here today and you look fabulous. So you got, you built a bridge, you, you got, you made it over the bridge. <laughs> Joining us now are two of the moms, Jessica and her colleagues profiled. So let's welcome Liz, a single mother from Washington state and Dakita, a mom of two from Maryland. What's up ladies? Hi. Hello. Well, you both look beautiful. You both look so well put together. You almost don't look like moms. <laughs> it's like, um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, so to both of you, what made you want to participate in Jessica's series? Liz, I'll start with you. Um, sometime in August, we found out that school would not be going back at all. And I was having a bit of a mental breakdown uh, because I didn't know what to do with my 11 year old son. So my sister let me know that the New York Times was looking for moms to share their stories. Mm. And it kind of started as a vent. And as it went on, it just became a show of solidarity with other moms who could read and understand and feel connected. Absolutely. Um, Dakita, how about you? Well, the same reasons that Liz gave, but also as an autism mom, it was really important for me to allow other autism moms to be seen. We live in a very isolated world, and I just felt like well, I can talk about this topic, but also show other autism moms and the world what we are going through at home. Absolutely, representation. Um, so, Dakita, the pictures in this series really tell the story. So, what's happening in this one? Well, that is a typical day for us, Kelly. Uh, so as I'm working from home full time, my daughter is, uh, that's Leilani, she's 15 years old and she has severe non-vocal non autism. And what that means is that she has to sit next to me while I do my own work and I physically help her to answer her teacher's questions by helping her to, to speak on her device. Mm -hmm. And while doing that, I'm on a WebEx call for work and I'm also taking notes uh, from this meeting so what you don't see in that picture is my pandemic puppy, as we lovingly call him, uh, going off in the kitchen. And But more important is my daughter. I have a daughter in middle school. And <laughs> Hi. I have a daughter in middle school. And um, I was not able to help her. I can't, I'm only one person. I can't be in two places at once. Mm. So being that she's upstairs in middle school, I'm just kind of communicating with her via text and while I'm doing everything else. 
uh, that is a typical day for us. That's what you see in that photo. Yeah, that's a lot. It's like, oh, something's got to give. It's like something, it's, mm -hmm. and it's asking your kids sometimes to be more responsible than they usually have to be um, in, in this is. moment or at this age. So, Jessica, you learned something every mother can do right now to make their lives easier, right? Absolutely. We all have so much on our plates. If we can just take one thing off our plates today, mm. that could make you feel better tomorrow. So whether that's d just deciding, you know what, this thing is not going to get done ever, or delegating it to one of your kids or to a spouse if you have one, or, you know, to a coworker if it's a work thing, just saying there is one thing today that I'm just not going to do. And the other thing is this has been such a hard time for everyone, and I don't want to sound Pollyannish because, you know, we also want to scream, but kind of finding gratitude for the extra moments that we do often get to spend with our kids because of the pandemic. You know, those seem like two small things, but they can really help day to day. Absolutely, and I think it's okay to have those gratitude moments where you're like, you know what, it's all really rough, but this is a really cool moment I got to have, you know, that I normally wouldn't. But at the same time, it's also okay to know that life is a bit of a roller coaster right now. And while I'm feeling gratitude today, tomorrow I could not, and it's fine. And tomorrow, tomorrow I could be like, gratitude's not today. Um, we know that momming is harder than ever, and we all need time off um, and, and moments for ourselves. So we want to help Liz and Dakita unwind and ladies, we are sending each of you and a guest on a four-night trip to the Hyatt Regency Maui Resort and Spa in Hawaii. Woo! You will enjoy luxurious oceanfront accommodations, an award-winning Drums of the Pacific Luau, world-class dining, an elaborate pool with water slides, waterfalls, and so much more. I mean, I feel like this is going to be really good for you, and I, and I think that it's it's amazing too, like y'all being so brave and like you said, representing a community that maybe isn't heard often, you know, Dakita. And I think it's really important that, you know, we don't shame ourselves for being like, Wah! like, you know, cause that's gonna happen every now and then and we're human. And I think it's really cool that y'all have opened up and let everybody in in this Primal Scream series. Um, and we all have it and it's okay. And I hope you have the best time ever. And if you need a friend to go, I will give you my number. <laughs> <laughs> Want more fun stuff? I thought so. Check out these videos floating around my head. This one is really cool. I'm just saying. No pressure. <laughs>